Hey everybody, this is Kite Altera here with Kite Talks About. And in this video, I'm actually going to be doing an upgrade to my composting video that I made a few months ago. So I was thinking about how I could upgrade it, and I thought about the formicarium post that I made last week and thought, why don't I do the same thing for my aerobic composting heap? So uh, right now, I'm actually going to be using the soil moisture tester as well as the uh, water level tester. But first, before I just install it, put the code up, and then go ahead and make everything, I first need to test it and calibrate it. So let's go ahead and do that now. So as you guys can see, I have three cups that are filled with soil that are in varying degrees of wetness. The one all the way to the left, this one is completely dehydrated and dry. This one in the middle, it is in the optimal phase, uh, optimal wetness and uh, hydration. It's not too dry, not too wet, and of course that means that this one all the way to the right is completely, completely soaked. So this is what I'm going to be using to calibrate the soil moisture sensor because I want this, the one in the middle, to be the optimal range that it stays in and to alert me if it goes all the way to this side, which is completely dry, or all the way to this side, which is completely soaked, and do different things based upon that. And here, even though it may be a little bit too small to see, I actually have it written down, the different variables that I want to determine what does what. So up here, this will be the highest priority item. This is if the water level sensor is low. That means that the water pump is actually too low to supply any of the water to the composting heap. Uh, that could be a problem, that will be a problem because the water pump that I'm using constantly needs water. It can't work correctly without any water. So this will be the highest priority item. I don't need the water pump getting damaged. The next one is if the soil moisture sensor is low. So if it's very dry as it is here, is extremely dehydrated, I want the pump to be on. So for the water level sensor being low, I want everything to be off except for the buzzer and LED, which is the alerting system. The second thing will be the pump turning on if the soil moisture sensor is low. The third one is if the humidity is high, it'll turn a fan on. And the fourth one is if the humidity is low, it'll turn the water pump on and the heat on as well and have a delay. So the first thing we need to do since we know we, know we have the variables, we know what we want to work and not to work, we already know the two items that we need and we have everything set up for the test. So let's go ahead, jump on the computer, and we'll do a test. But before we jump on the computer, one important thing that needs to be mentioned is that these two items, which I got off of Amazon, I'll have the links in the description, uh, these have three leads. The one to the left on both of them are signal, the one in the middle for both of them is positive, and the one on the right of both of them is the negative side. And those will correspond to the colors that we're gonna have connected to our Elegoo microcontroller. So since this test is gonna be for the soil moisture sensor, let's go ahead and grab our Elegoo and the leads. And let's go ahead and plug everything up. So you have negative to negative. You have a signal, which these are analog signals. So make sure you have uh, the signal wires going to analog in, and you put that on the signal side. And for the positive, we're actually gonna put this not to five volts, but we're actually gonna put it on one of the pins. As you can see here, it's already lit up. And so we're gonna alter the code. An important thing to remember when you're actually using this is that this tends to rust. Now this type that I bought actually has a special coating on it to ensure that it doesn't rust as quickly. But one thing you need to make sure you do is not connected to your 5 volt or 3.3 volts, but connected to one of your digital pins. Now, if you connect this to a clock, you can have it so that during certain times of the day, once, twice a day, or however often you want it to be, this digital pin sends a high signal, which is about 5.6 volts or so, and that'll turn it off, uh, turn it on, I mean, sorry about that. And then after it does its check and verifies the humidity level, and verifies the soil moisture level, the humidity being sensed by the DHT22, and 
this uh, water, soil moisture level being determined by this you know, component, it can do certain actions and then immediately turn it off. And this will definitely uh, lengthen the life of your soil moisture sensor. So again, like I said, don't connect it to five volts, don't connect it to 3.3 volts. Connect it to your digital pin so you can modulate when it turns off and when it turns on to do your soil moisture check. So we are on our Arduino IDE on the PC. And as you can see, I have SM, which is soil moisture sensor on pin five. Remember I talked to you guys about not putting it on VCC such as 5 volts or 3.3 volts because that is how you quickly, quickly corrode your sensor. So the pads that conduct the electricity and sense the reading from them, that's how it gets corroded. So you want to have this on a type of clock. So if you got a DS3231 for example, and then you can time when you want this on and want them off. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get the driest one. And recall we have this um, checking the value every second. We're actually gonna change it from one second to about 250, so about a quarter of a second. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and verify that. And we're done compiling and I'm gonna upload it. Okay, so it's done uploading. Here, just as a quick little reminder, this is, this is an analog signal. So that's why I have it on analog pin zero. It doesn't matter which pin you have it on so long as it's analog. Just like here, it doesn't matter what pin you have it on so long as it's digital. So we're gonna go ahead and open up the serial monitor. And you can tell clear output. All right, so, so far we are getting a reading of zero because there's nothing between it. If I were to put my finger between it, you can see that we're starting to get a reading. And as I take it off, it goes straight back to zero. So first thing we're going to do is use the bone dry soil and see what reading we get from this. As a reminder, the soil that I'm using is actually the soil from the compost. It's just that for the driest soil, I actually put it inside of the oven to dry it out completely. For the second one, which is the semi-wet, that's the actual condition the soil is in as of right now. And of course, I waterlogged the last one. So let's go ahead and plug this baby in. Loosen up the soil a little bit, put it in, and we get a reading of zero. So it's just zero. <laughs> uh, so we're going to go ahead and remove that. That was quick. Move this to the side. And now we're going to get the one that is in between. So for this one, it's a tad bit compacted. And I say a really tad bit compacted. So we're gonna go ahead and dig it up just a little bit, not gonna make too much of a mess. And then once the soil is broken up, we're gonna go ahead and put the soil moisture sensor in and see what reading we get. Looks like we are getting about 500, that's probably where it's gonna settle at. So this soil moisture sensor as well as the water level sensor is pretty sensitive. So we're getting about 499, so I would say about 490 to 505. These are arbitrary values, um, and that's just to account for the um, error. So the range for the error, it can be a little bit more, a little bit less. So let's go ahead and disable auto scroll just so we can remember what that value was. So when it was in the middle, we got about 490 roughly. So let's go ahead and enable auto scroll. And just as a quick test to make sure it's still working. So 495, I'm gonna put it in here. This is absolute just wet soil. All right, so before we were in the 490s, now we're in the 590s. And this is all the way in. It, yeah, this thing is soaked. So we're gonna take this out. Wow, this thing is dripping wet. So 490 is when it's in the good range. It's going to be over 500, between 590 when it's wet, 590 and 600. I'm trying to move it around, see if I can get a higher reading. So it looks like anything greater than, uh, five, I would say about uh, 575 and above. Um, so we can use that kind of range. So let's go ahead and take this baby out. We're stuck at about 595-ish. So goodness, that was 
that was soaked down. I actually need to clean this up a little bit um, because it is just so much water. Alrighty, so now we are back. This time we're using the water level sensor. So we'll just change this up a little bit just so we can reflect it. So we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing. Everything is exactly the same. The only thing that's different is the name and what it function as. So we're gonna go ahead and upload this. And we have an upload. So we're gonna go ahead and open up the serial monitor. All right, there we go. So as of right now, we are getting zero. And here I go dipping in. And we're getting, it's getting, it's increasing. We're at four, no, 450. Now, the thing that I've learned with this water level sensor is that it's very, very sensitive. Like, even as the water's jiggling, I found, or going from one value to the other, going back and forth in the cup, it'll actually detect that. So, as of right now, we are on max water. It's all the way up. And then we'll drop it down. And you can see it goes quickly. So, we go from zero to about 400. Then we go all the way up. It actually goes up to five, probably up to 600 is what it can go to. Alrighty guys, so the question is what did we learn? We now know what the level is, the average level for the soil moisture sensor when we have it in the driest cup, which is zero. When we have the medium, well, the medium moisture, medium hydrated, uh, mid-level hydrated uh, soil, and when we have it in the wettest soil. And the same thing can be said for the water level sensor. So the highest that we got for the water level sensor was about 400, 400 500 roughly. Uh, for the moisture, the soil uh, moisture sensor, it was on the 600 side, and then for like 490, 480, something like that, and then down to zero immediately. So we know the range that we need to use. This is only part one, mind you. So as we continue going on with this project and building it, uh, we will be fine tuning. The next step for me is to go ahead and uh, get all the items that I need for this project instead of doing the testing because the testing phase is done. The variables, we know what we need uh, to put into the code. The next step is putting everything together, figuring out what we need and soldering everything on. So without further ado, thank you guys for watching this video. This is Kaida Altera here. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share with your friends or different websites. Uh, and hit the little bell icon so you'll be alerted the next time that we post a video. Thanks for sharing, and I'll see you guys in the next video.